In this video, we're going to show you how to use the dynamic zoom controls to create Ken Burns style effects of zooming in, zooming out, panning the frame, and doing all kinds of cool things like that. So stick around and we will be right back and show you how to use dynamic zoom. So the dynamic zoom effect is similar to Final Cut Pro's Ken Burns effect. So you can zoom in, zoom out, pan, uh, do some creative things, uh, and you can do it with video or stills, doesn't matter. We're gonna be showing it with stills just because uh, that's what I loaded up here. And a lot of the controls are gonna be very, very simple. I'm just gonna uh, select one. I've got this camera over here. I'm going to go to the inspector and we'll look at the dynamic zoom effects. So if I turn this on, it's going to crop in to this uh, for some reason here. Uh, let me change this to fit. All right. And we have a few different effects here. Linear is just going to be smooth all the way across the same speed in and out. We can ease into it, ease out of it, and ease in and out. And then we can swap uh, the direction that it's gonna go. Right now we're on the transform tools. I wanna go to the dynamic zoom controls. All right, so here we go. Now, if we just look at this, we kinda need to figure out what our in and out points are. I actually think it does it in reverse, um, silly me. The green is your start point. The red line is your finish point. So I'm just going to go ahead and swap those. And I want a zoom effect coming into this area here. And I'm just going to start having this cropped in just a hair. And on this machine, it is a little easier if I take each clip and say render cache color output so that it pre-renders it and it'll play back a little bit smoother. If I was on my 5K iMac, I wouldn't need to do this, but this uh, 2016 MacBook Pro, uh, for some reason with these files, these pictures are all taken with a Sony a7 III. They're you know, fairly large files. So um, we'll see what we can do with these. All right, so let's, uh, let's play this. All right, so we have our cool zoom effect there. And I'm gonna change this to ease in and out, and it's going to re-render it. And I'll go ahead and put loop on, and it should only take a second to render these. So if you're doing static shots, especially like product shots, having some movement can really make a big difference. So there we go. And we'll watch it again. So pretty nice. All right, we'll go to the next one here and see what we got. Let's fit this. And again, I hit buffer, I don't know, whatever reason it defaults to the exact opposite of what I would want. And we can just do a nice slow, uh, start there. These images are bigger than the actual frame. So I'm just going to crop in here a little bit, swap that and just crop that in a little bit. And I'm going to ease in on this one and oh, let me select that one to render in fact i'm just going to select them all so i don't forget render color output and we'll see how this one looks pretty cool and Let's try another one. So on this one, I think I wanna do something a little bit different. And let's turn on 
our dynamic zoom. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, make it a little easier to work with. Maybe go to 50%. There we go. That's going to make it a little easier to, to work with. So I'm going to make the size of the frames the same. And I'm going to move one over to the left and one over to the right. And let's see how that one looks. That'll give us just a nice slow pan across without really changing the size. Although I think it did change the size slightly. We'll see how that goes. So pretty cool effect there. Okay, on this one, I think I want something a little bit more dynamic. And I'm going to try and make these boxes the same size. I'll swap them. And that should be good. So I'm going to start with the green, move to the red. And when we play that one, we get a nice, cool moving shot like that. Here we'll uh, do something fairly similar. I'm going to start there and end a little closer. This one I want to ease in and out. And kind of same with this one. I'm going to get a little closer. And I think I've got something on each of these now. Okay, and let's go ahead and render this out and see what it looks like. So I'm going to call this dynamic zoom. I'll add that to the render queue and render these frames out. Okay, now that it's rendered, let's go ahead and take a look. Go to full screen. Now, of course, you have to be careful when you're zooming in that you don't go too far beyond the actual resolution and you end up losing image quality. So, they, just got to be careful with that 16 megapixels. Uh, you can go about two times, four times, but you, know, you just want to keep that in mind that you zoom too much in and you will lose image quality. So pretty cool effect. Like I said, it's uh, pretty straightforward, not that difficult to do, and it can add a nice touch to your footage or stills, especially stills. I think, uh, you just throw up a still when you're doing a product piece and it's just going to look boring, but you do a nice, you know, zoom or a pan and it's going to look significantly better. So play around with the dynamic zoom and see if it's something that's going to help you out in your footage. So thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe, smash down on the like button and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. We've got a ton of cool content coming. We have giveaways, product reviews, all kinds of cool stuff. So stick around and there's always going to be lots more to see. 
So this has been Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.